What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna quickly show you how to connect your website to Cloudflare. Cloudflare is probably the fastest, easiest, and free way to get SSL on your website. This means enabling the HTTPS protocol on your website's address, which Google now ranks as one of the major factors for improving the search engine presence of your website. Cloudflare also provides great security and speed enhancements for your website, all free. Before we continue though, you'll need to make sure your hosting service is connected to your domain by simply navigating to your website on your web browser. So as you can see here, if I go to herschel.net, which I'll be using for this video, you can see that it leads to my website as intended. Now, if your domain isn't yet connected to your web hosting and you don't know how to do this, check out the previous video that I made about this. The link to that video is in the description of this video. Now, what you're gonna need to do is go to cloudflare.com and create an account. Now, I've already got an account and I've got several websites I've already connected. So for me, what I'm gonna do is just head over here to add a site. And right here, it's gonna ask me for the URL of my website. Now remember, I've already got my website live. So when I go to herschel.net, it already goes to the website. Now I've typed in herschel.net and I'm gonna hit add site. In the next step, it's gonna ask me to select a plan. I'm just gonna select this free plan right down here and click continue. Now it's gonna do a quick search for your DNS settings. And what you wanna do is make sure that these settings here match what you have with your registrar. So as I demonstrated in a previous video, I set these up in GoDaddy. And on GoDaddy, you'll see that I've got the IP address for the website right here. And it's the same IP address that appears over here. So everything looks good. I'm gonna make sure that proxied is selected here. So you can unselect it or select it. I'm gonna make sure it's selected. And then I'm gonna hit continue. The next thing it's now asking me to do is to change my name servers. So right here, it gives me specific instructions on how to do it on GoDaddy because Cloudflare detected that I use GoDaddy as my registrar. So following these instructions, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to copy this address here. And just as it says in the instructions, I'm going to remove all these name servers. Down here, I'm gonna select enter my own name servers. And then I'm gonna paste in the ones that Cloudflare gives me. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit save. Now, if it pops up any warnings or anything like that, you can go ahead and continue. Now, the changes have been entered, but they can take some time to actually take effect. As you can see, the old name server information is still appearing, but what I can do is refresh, and now you'll see that the new name servers are appearing. Now, back in Cloudflare, we're gonna head over here, and we're gonna hit done. And then I'm gonna select here to just finish later. Right now, as you can see, the changes haven't quite taken effect. So it's asking me to complete your name server setup. So Cloudflare hasn't picked up the DNS changes just yet. And this could take some time. As it says here, registrars can take up to 24 hours to process name server changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave for a little while and come back and see if those changes have occurred yet. Okay, actually that didn't end up taking very long at all. I jumped ahead and a few minutes later, it already says, great news, Cloudflare is now protecting your site. So it looks like it worked, everything went through. And so just to show you again, I refresh the page and sure enough, it says that Cloudflare is ready to go. However, the way to know if it's actually working is to head right back to your website and add the HTTPS prefix right here. So although Cloudflare has picked up the change, as you can see, it's not yet actualized on the website. So this may take a little bit of time. So once again, we'll just wait a little while. I'll step away, go do something else. And when I come back, we'll try to resume and see if these changes have occurred. So now that we know that Cloudflare has successfully detected the DNS changes over at GoDaddy or whoever your registrar is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the SSL TLS section here. And we're gonna look at these options here. Now, what this is, is it's an array of different options that you can have to secure your website visitors from uh, possible intrusions and, uh, and uh, make sure that any data sent back and forth is fully encrypted. But in this situation, uh, because we don't know what the web host will accept, we're gonna go with flexible. Now, this option right here is the one that the most web hosts will be compatible with. And basically, you can always upgrade later and if for instance uh with aws like i'm using lightsail in this example as my host 
If uh, Lightsail doesn't accept full encryption, we'll know that because as soon as we select it and we try to visit our site, we'll get security errors. So then I can just jump right back to Flexible and it'll work again. So that's the first thing I wanted to select for you guys. Oops. So uh, that's selected there and those changes actually apply right away. It says this setting was last changed a few seconds ago. So it automatically saves as soon as you click something. Now we're gonna scroll down here and there is a SSL TLS recommender. Now what this will do is it'll just send you an email with the recommended uh, settings. So we'll go and activate that um, and see if anything happens, which you can do later. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the Ed certificates here. And it looks like the certificate that Cloudflare issues is active, scrolling down. The next setting here is always use HTTPS. Now what this does is it automatically changes all references to HTTP automatically over to HTTPS. And that is what we want. We want everything to be secure. Whatever transactions are happening or data exchanges are happening between your web server and your end user, you want to be fully secured. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that. The next thing is something called HSTS. This is another thing that is very good for SEO. I can't exactly explain why, but you can easily look up articles uh, relating to HSTS and SEO and you'll see that uh, Google has published time and time again that this is a great feature to make sure you have. So I'm gonna enable that. And then it gives me a whole bunch of warnings about it. So yes, I understand what I'm doing. So I'm gonna hit next. And then I'm gonna enable some of these features here. So right here, um, I'm just, overall enabling HSTS. The max header age, uh, this is kind of something that is, you know, a little bit more advanced, but I'm gonna go with the recommended setting, which is six months. And I don't wanna get too granular with my explanations because this lecture could go on forever otherwise. And my goal is to make this quick and painless for you. So the next thing we're gonna do is apply the policy to subdomains, enable preload, and no sniff headers. That's all security stuff. So that's all great to have and we're gonna hit okay, and that is done. We can leave this at the default setting, which is fine. And everything else looks like it's enabled. Let's see, certificate transparency monitoring. This is another feature that it'll just give you uh, email notifications whenever there's any changes to your SSL certificate, which are good to have. We don't anticipate any of that happening on its own, but these SSL certificates, they do have expiration dates, and so they have to be reissued, at which point you'll receive an email. So now let's go ahead and scroll right back up to the top again. Now, for now, those are all the settings that I'm going to mess with right now. Because I'm doing this on a WordPress site, there's actually a WordPress plugin that I'm gonna be installing and showing you guys that automatically configures Cloudflare to work with WordPress and enable all the features that allow WordPress to work quickly. And now we're gonna head over to the speed section. Now in the speed section, I'm not gonna wait for this to load. What I'm gonna do instead, I'm just gonna head over to optimization and we're gonna enable a couple of settings here too. Now, there are some paid settings up here that we're not gonna mess with and we're gonna auto minify JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. Now, just as a warning, if you guys have like really fancy and premium WordPress themes, for example, on your website, Enabling uh, the minify JavaScript option might cause things to start acting a little funny. So you may wanna leave that off, but because I'm using a really basic theme, I'm gonna leave that on because I want all of that code to be compressed and minified as much as possible. And what that does is kind of eliminate any unnecessary code and things like that. Now, right here, there's an option about WordPress. There is a plugin that you can install, but I'm gonna wait until the website is resolving with the HTTPS prefix before I start working on the plugin and I'll show you that in just a moment. There's some other pro features. I'm also gonna enable rocket loader here. So for now, those are all the settings that I'm gonna mess with on the speed section. The next thing we have is caching. Now caching is something where Cloudflare will store like a temporary version of your website that it will serve very quickly. So instead of pulling code every time somebody loads a page, it will load a cached version of it, which is sort of a temporary stored version of it. So now heading over to the configuration section, it looks like they have a new updated always online. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this, just update to the new version today. That's already on, on wait, always online is just a, a feature where it'll keep your website running uh, even when there's no connection to the web server, it'll at least make it appear that it's up. And so I'm gonna update that. I don't know what that does, but I guess it, it brings it to the latest version of that. And scrolling back up just to kind of look, um, I think we're good on almost everything else here. Now, the last thing I guess on this page I wanna show you is something called development mode. 
So what happens here is because Cloudflare stores a temporary version of your website, sometimes when you're developing and you're kind of going into CSS files or PHP files or some of the theme files, for example, you may want to switch this on because you don't want the cached version loading while you're making major changes to the website. Otherwise, you'll be really frustrated with changes not appearing all the time. So this is a good feature to turn on when you're working on theme files and some of the core WordPress files, for example, or you're making really big changes to your website. But if you're just doing a blog post or something like that, that stuff will show regardless. Um, but this is more for skinning changes and bigger changes to the website. So scrolling right back up again, I think that's it for now. Uh, like I mentioned before, there is a WordPress plugin, but once we get the website working with HTTPS, I will walk through that. Now it took a couple of hours and we've jumped ahead and it looks like uh, about two hours later that the SSL is working exactly as it should. So as you can see, I have HTTPS colon slash slash Herschel.net and it resolves perfectly. And then if I type in www.herschel.net with the HTTPS prefix, that also works perfectly. So for the last thing I wanted to show you, um, this being a WordPress website, there is actually a WordPress plugin for Cloudflare that automatically configures some things to make it work optimally with WordPress. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over here to the plugin section and we're gonna click add new and then we're gonna search for Cloudflare. Now the one we're looking for is right here, Cloudflare by Cloudflare Inc, right here. And we're gonna install now and then we're gonna activate. Now, once it's activated, it'll appear here in the plugin section. So right here on the, the left menu, we hit plugins and you'll see that Cloudflare is already active here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to settings and then Cloudflare, and then we're going to sign into the account. So I'm going to enter my credentials for my account. So the first thing is the email address. And then the second thing they're asking for is this global API key. So if we go back to Cloudflare and then we look up here on the top right, you'll see this little person with an arrow. You click on that and then we go to my profile. And then in this profile section, we're gonna head over to API tokens. And right here under API keys, you'll see a section that says global API key. We're gonna view that. It's gonna ask for your password again because this is a very secret secure thing. You don't wanna give this to people. Verify that you're human and then click view. And then it'll give you your API key. So we're gonna copy that and then we're going to head back to WordPress and paste it in and then save API credentials. And boom, it's done. Now right here, the first option right here is apply recommended Cloudflare settings for WordPress. We're going to hit apply and that'll take just a moment. And it's been done. So guys, SSL is now installed on your website and you've got all the additional features that Cloudflare has to offer. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to comment in the comment section below. And as always, guys, if you found this video helpful, let YouTube know by hitting that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell for notifications of future videos and live streams. Thanks for watching, guys.